Hey everybody, it's Pastor David from Walden Community Church. Hey, I was thinking about something this week when I was preparing for uh, Sunday's lesson, and that is, did you know that Facebook has been around since 2004? Started in 2004, it opened to the public in 2006. I joined Facebook in 2007, so a year after it went public. I've been on Facebook almost as long as it's been around. Been on there for 12 years, and I'm on all of them. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and really, all three of those social media platforms, they've changed a lot. They've all changed a lot since those early days when they first started. And one of the things that I've noticed that's changed over the years is the prompt. The little prompt, I don't know if you even notice it, like before you start to type, into the field box, there's already some like grayed out words there. Like if you looked at Twitter way back when, it used to say, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then you'd type, right, what you were doing. But Facebook said, what's on your mind? What's on your mind? What are you doing versus what's on your mind? So whereas Twitter was about what you were doing, something that was active, something that was physical, something that you were uh, on the job with, something that you were creating or making, Facebook was about what you were thinking about or feeling good about or feeling bad about. And suddenly, Facebook became this place to vent and spread gossip and spread anger and spread rumor because, well, I guess that's what was on our minds. What is Facebook now? I mean, look at your wall. What is it filled with? Is it filled with your pictures, your ideas, your joy, your happiness, or your life? Or is it filled with anger and gossip and policing the neighborhood? Is it tattletaling on this or that? Is it, boy, I hate those so-and-sos, or calling people out, or complaining about the government, or the CIA, or your neighbors, or the school system, or the roads, or the internet? Is Facebook a good representation of your heart? Is it a good representation of your happiness? Is Facebook a good example of you making every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy? Let me read to you a passage from Psalm 101, verse 5. Whoever slanders his neighbor secretly, I will destroy. Whoever has a haughty look and an arrogant heart, I will not endure. Do you notice that slander and arrogance were on the same line? Do you notice how closely those two things are related? Why do you think that is? Maybe it's because when I tear someone down in my heart, I feel that maybe I'm better than that person, and then I have the right to do that. James 4, 6 says, God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. You know, my son, Dermot, hates things right now, or at least that's what he says. He just uses the word hate now a lot. Like we say, hey, eat your green beans. I hate green beans. Hey, play with your toys. I hate toys. Hey, we're gonna watch this show. I hate this show. And it sounds so weird to have this five-year-old just do a 180 on us from a year ago where he used to say yes to everything and now he suddenly hates stuff. Can you imagine God hating something or God saying that he hates something? Let me read you another passage. This is from Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6 verses 16 through 19. There are six things that the Lord hates. Six things that the Lord hates. Seven that are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devices wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, and one who sows discord among his brothers. God hates it when we separate things. God hates it when we draw lines in relationships. God hates it when we spread discord amongst one another. So when I speak out against my neighbor, 
or when I speak out against another person, I am actually stirring up the anger of God. So why do we do it? Why do we talk and run our mouth so openly as if we have no fear of God? This is, this is what we see on talk shows. This is what we see on reality TV. This is what we see in politics. This is what the media teaches you. And, and we now are teaching our children to act this way because they see us act this way. They see TV act this way. Where does bullying come from? It comes from arrogance. Bullying comes from a sense that we are better than some other person and it's okay if I tear them down. It's okay if I shame them. They're not a person like me. So people like that need to be put in their place. All right, so what's the bottom line? Well, if you're ever speaking to someone about someone and that person is not present and your goal is not love or fellowship or grace, then you're sinning, right? And you are harming four people. You're harming yourself. You're harming the person you're talking about. You're harming the person you're talking to and you're making God angry. This Sunday at Walden Church, we're starting a four-part series on chasing happiness, pursuing happiness. And I would just ask, are you happy? Are you happy? What would it take for you to be happy? And if you, and if you think you're a happy person, do the words you say tell that to other people? Do the words you say convey to the rest of the world, yes, I am a happy person. Hey, we've got two services this Sunday, one at 9.30, which is our more traditional service with hymns, and we have our 11 o'clock service, which is a more contemporary service with a worship band. Also, our 11 o'clock service has uh, something for children from birth all the way through high school. We'd love to see you there. Have a blessed week.